we continue to ignore mental health, mental health, mental health. When will the criminal justice system take it seriously? Because it's rapid in our communities. On September 2nd, we attended a competency hearing for our young brother, Henry Lewis. Henry has been found incompetent four times since August of 2020. The doctors were hired by the courts. In regards to the law, the term incompetent refers to a person's inability to understand legal proceedings or transactions or lack the mental capacity to understand the consequences of his or her actions. Incompetence can be caused by a variety of factors, including mental illness, trauma, stroke, or mental disability. The prosecutor must prove that Henry is competent. The burden is on the state of Florida. Our young brother Henry has suffered from mental health issues since a very young boy and a determined, caring mother who did not stop crying out for help, although they took her joy. Henry has been failed by all the systems that are in place to help him and to protect the public. Now 15 year old Henry has been direct filed as an adult in Broward County, Florida, and is facing life in prison. The charge, murder, mental health is here. Are you listening? Mental health is here and it will affect our loved ones and the community at large. Understand, that we are in a lion's den. sitting at the defense table. So you first met Henry Lewis in 2018, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and you did a brief report uh -huh. and you amended it at a later time to secure place. Correct. That's right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, are you aware that uh, Henry Lewis went to AFYC in December of 2018? Are you aware of that? So at the time, uh, I am aware of it now. Okay, how did you become aware of it? I don't know. I've, um, bear with me. I vaguely recall a reference that he, I believe his mother made, maybe Henry made at the first meeting, and I, I didn't take a note that he may have made a reference that he was at AFYC. I don't know. You didn't read any documents or any no, I did not. reports coming from AFYC? No, I did not. Are you aware that Henry Lewis was found competent to proceed in February of 2019 by two doctors? No, I was not. By Dr. Zavani and Dr. Pritchard, and then again in March by two other doctors, Dr. Jones and Dr. Musgrove. Were you aware of that? No, I'm not. Okay. So you did not review those four evaluations? No, I did not. And 
Would it surprise you that Henry Lewis regained competency in two months when he was 13 years old? Yes, that would surprise me. Why? Because of his psychological conditions or states. Um, I believe he could, it wouldn't surprise me that he had obtained factual competence in two months. The rational competence, the ability to use the factual information is surprising that he could gain that so quickly. So you would disagree with Dr. Zavadi, Dr. Pritchard, Dr. Jones, and Dr. Musgrove, correct? I did not say that. Well, you just said he could, you're surprised he regained competency within two months, mm -hmm. correct? Correct? I am surprised. Again, okay. his competency within two months. I don't know if they were right or wrong. I have no opinion or statement about the other evaluators' work. Okay, and you stated in your 2018 report that he was lacking in all six areas of competency, correct? Um, bear with me one moment. Let me review that report. Very Do you have the 18? Yes. No, that's incorrect. I opined in my 2018 report that he did exhibit the capacity to exhibit appropriate behavior. Okay, in court. So yes. five. Five. Out of six. But you said his prognosis was guarded and the time estimated to attain competency would be one to two years. Yes. Yeah, and four doctors found him competent in two months. Correct? I don't know that. Okay. What are some of the predictors for attainment of competency? competency like how are you going to figure out if he's able to attain competency what do you look at look at the <clears throat> nature of the mental conditions certainly with the juvenile the age of the juvenile um, what about past attainment of competency that would certainly be relevant in my mind but you didn't read those four reports where he had regained competency correct Correct. Nobody provided me those reports, so I did not read those reports. So as you sit here today, you're telling us that it's going to take him one to two years to regain competency, correct? That's what you opined in this case now, correct? Yes. Why two to one to two years? Based on his intellectual disability predominantly, and there is also a concern regarding at least his reported um, psychiatric symptoms and his antipsychotic medication. Okay, so did you know at the time of the evaluations I just told you about before that he had demonstrated an acceptable understanding of the legal process in 2019 after he was discharged from AFYC? Did you know that? That's relevant. Relevant, this is a competency hearing today, so I'm just going to object that to relevance. On that basis, I'm going to overrule it. I'm sorry, what was the question? Go ahead, doctor. Um, okay, the, the evaluations I talked about back in 2019, do you realize that Henry Lewis demonstrated an acceptable understanding of the legal process? Would that surprise you? I think I answered that yes. In two months, that would surprise me. Okay. Um, and Dr. Zavadny in 2019 documented that Henry Lewis reported his defense attorney was trying to prove his innocence and that not guilty meant you did not do the crime. Judge, again, I'm going to object as to asking this witness to comment as to another doctor's report that he didn't even review and wasn't provided by the state. The state was provided it if they wanted to go into this line of question. I don't know what ground that is. You just elaborate. It would be irrelevant. It's, it's irrelevant in an improper question of this way. Sustained. I need to hear grounds, people, not speaking Sorry. objections. I know there's no jury here, but I still need to hear grounds. Sorry. Go okay, ahead. so hypothetically speaking, if four doctors found him confident in 2019, how do you just lose knowledge when he comes and sees you? How does that happen? I'm withdrawing. How does someone lose that knowledge? So someone can acquire information, um, and depending on the individual, um, their, the length of that they will retain that information is variable. So some people 
will retain information for a lifetime. Others will retain it for only a year. And I believe there are some human beings who will retain information for no more than a day. But what would cause somebody like Henry Lewis to lose the knowledge? Intellectual disability, low IQ, and perhaps a psychiatric disorder. Okay, we'll talk about that later. My interactions with him, both in 2018 and 2021, were consistent with somebody with mild intellectual disability. So it looks at cognitive functioning then, not mental illness, right? Correct. Okay. Was it validated to use on juveniles? Um, yes, it was. Okay. It was? Yes. All right. Who published the MMSE 2? R, I believe. Psychological, uh, yeah, R, I believe. Okay, psychological assessment resources? Yes. How long does it take to administer this test, the MMSE 2? Um, it depends on the examinee, but I'll say three or four minutes. And do you know what ages the publisher said it's recommended for? The instrument that I used is 18 and older, yes. And how old is Henry Lewis? 15. Okay, so you used a, a tool <coughs> that you shouldn't even use with Henry Lewis, because he's 15, correct? No. The, asking any examinee to remember three simple words is appropriate. I suppose if they're an infant and they're nonverbal yet, that might be foolish, but any I could ask a seven-year-old, remember these words, what is the year, what is the date? Everything contained in the MMSE2 was completely appropriate to administer to Henry Lewis. The but the publisher publishes the MMSE2, and they say don't use it unless they're 18. They don't right? say that, I don't believe. Okay, so let's show you the publisher, the PAR, right. MMSE2, look at what the age says. Right, it says age 18 years and older. Okay, 18 years and older, correct? Right. And Henry Lewis is not 18, correct? Correct. So you used an instrument that is not even validated to be used on a 15 year old. It's been correct. Oh, it's been validated for well, 15 year olds? The question so that. Your honor. Okay, hold on. Argumented. Time out, time out, time out, time out. What's your basis of your objection? She's not letting the doctor fully answer. It's what? She's not letting the doctor answer the question. She's oh. I agree you are not letting the doctor answer the question. So it's not so much an objection as please let him answer the question. The, the questions contained in the MMSE 2, be brief version, um, sold with adult normative data was absolutely appropriate to use with Henry Lewis. The questions in the instrument are consistent with psychological evaluations for anyone other than infants. Um, and part of, I believe it's part of the requirements for forensic mental health evaluation to, to examine somebody's orientation to person, place, and time. Okay, so who says that? Who says it's okay to use this instrument on a 15-year-old? Who says it? Me. Just you? No. But I, as I said to you, those questions are, it's the same questions in a juvenile MMSE. Has it been validated for 15-year-olds? And is it in professional literature that we know? No. It's just Dr. Simon that says, I'm going to use it on a 15-year-old, and that's okay. Yes, Correct? Your Honor, right. argumentative. Yes, it's the same. <laughs> Well, when you're intellectually disabled, you potentially have memory problems. Moreover, he's on an antipsychotic, so I'm still concerned that he may have a psychiatric condition that could impair his ability to retrieve information he once knew. Is that Abilify? That is the antipsychotic he was prescribed on the date I met him, yes. Well, he has been prescribed that in the past in, in his records, correct? That's not new. Yes, he was prescribed the Abilify in 2018 also. Okay, and you're saying that this is uh, for psychosis? No, it's an antipsychotic medication. It could have a host of uses. Um, it is just concerning. And again, it, it just opens up other possibilities, of which I do not know. 
So armed with that information, did you do a thorough mental status examination exploring his psychotic symptoms in 20 minutes? I did a thorough mental status examination. Is Abilify sometimes prescribed for aggression? I do not know the answer to that. Because you're saying that it's an antipsychotic. And that's the only re is that your belief? It's the only reason it's prescribed as an antipsychotic. What I am saying is that I know Abilify is an antipsychotic. I do not know if <clears throat> medical doctors prescribe antipsychotics for aggression, and I'm not certain. I do not know if that's an appropriate off-label use of the drug. Is it used to augment other medications? Is Abilify used to augment? I know that, yes, it is. OK, like an antidepressant, like if he'd take an antidepressant, he would take Abilify. Mm -hmm. I have seen that. I'm aware that that is a use of Abilify. OK. Again, it could be for people with intellectual disability, they might retain information for a specific period of time that somebody without intellectual disability would retain that same information for a longer time. Moreover, it is possible that his psychiatric condition um, impairs his ability to retain information or at certain points in time retrieve information that he does have. What psychiatric condition? The psychiatric condition for which he is prescribed an antipsychotic. But you don't know sitting here if he's prescribed Abilify to offset the antidepressant for other reasons. You don't know, correct? I know that an antipsychotic is a powerful drug that should only be used for a psychiatric condition. So what psychiatric condition are you saying he has? I didn't offer the Abilify as a prescription. It may be um, used for Maybe inappropriately used for his intellectual disability. Maybe it is used for a psychiatric, a psychotic condition for which he's not diagnosed. He did report hearing voices. He did report seeing things. I'm not certain the veracity of those reports. Um, what I do know is that no one should be prescribing a antipsychotic medication for someone without a psychiatric diagnosis. Okay. Do they use it for autism? Abilify. I do not know Abilify. I do know that sometimes antipsychotics can be used in for autistic children. Okay. 